bless you people of the way. What a blessing it is to be back in the house of God one more time and to be able to share with you the word of the Lord. Certainly this is uh, the season of Advent as we already uh, have begun this journey, the journey to uh, Christmas Day, uh, the day that the church universal has set aside, has marked time uh, for over 2,000 years, reminding us of the great arrival of Jesus, uh, the keeping of the promise of God uh, to literally redeem humanity, all of creation back to God's self. And so it is a good time to be reminded that we are indeed a people who are not left without a promise-keeping God. And as we've been going through this season of preaching through hope, I hope and pray that uh, we will continue to lean into this promise-keeping God as a uh, foundation and source for the uh, vicissitudes, the ups and downs, the challenges that are happening in our lives. It is not lost upon me that we are uh, on the eve of another significant shutdown, if you will. Uh, we are being called upon. Uh, we're being asked by medical uh, professionals, by our elected leaders, our governor and others, uh, to enter into a, another season of, of uh, quarantining and uh, real significant social distancing and stay-at-home orders. Uh, and I know that for many of us, uh, the month of December, uh, the holiday season, Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, carries a different kind of heaviness uh, for many of us who have lost loved ones this year, for many of us who uh, have endured all kinds of tragedies and uh, unexpected turns in our lives. And, and so I, I speak to you as someone uh, who, who, who knows the 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 kind of burden of this season and this moment. And yet, I do know and I do believe that part of what it means to follow the ways of Jesus is to keep being reminded uh, that Jesus walks this walk with us, that we are not walking alone, uh, but that we are literally um, being led along uh, by the power of God's faithfulness. And so as we continue our journey through this season of coronavirus through these holy days, these sacred days of, of worship and remembrance and celebration, uh, I want you to keep reminding yourself that the Lord walks right along with us. Um, and that's what our, our message of hope uh, has been attempting to amplify and lift up over the last several weeks. And certainly last week, Minister Wayne preached an amazing and an important message about the already and the not yet. And and what does it mean to live in the in-between? And uh, this is, I think, the wondrous grace of God at work in our lives. That we don't have to necessarily start from scratch in these conversations, these inquiries, these reflections. Uh, even we whose faith is a little weak and shaken in this season, uh, have no fear. You are a part of a wonderful cloud of witnesses who during their journey asked God some hard questions had to endure and deal with uh, what appeared to be uh, the promises of God uh, lacking or, 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 or um, having a, a, a slow manifestation. But uh, one of the other lectionary passages that uh, uh, I was thinking of preaching today was in First Peter. It says that the Lord is not slack concerning God's promise, which means that the Lord uh, is not unable, unwilling, uh, unfaithful. Uh, when God promises a thing, you can count on it, that it will come to pass. And so the question for us then is to keep asking ourselves, God, how can I uh, be one of these people who can wait on you uh, until the manifestation of your promise? Isaiah chapter 40 then is where we'll spend our time in the lectionary today, uh, continuing the series on preaching uh, through hope, uh, preaching on hope, uh, speaking and lifting up the power and the significance and the, the contribution of hope in our lives. Uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 40 is one of uh, these, uh, call, it's called an exilic uh, uh, passage. The author is writing, many believe, uh, to a people, uh, the Jewish people, who are in exile in Babylon, meaning that they are literally 
enduring a season of their existence as a people where the promises of God made in the covenant, the Torah, the Ten Commandments, um, the promises that they rehearsed every week and every day uh, found them still in bondage, found them away from the place of promise. And so the prophet's role was always to keep reminding the people in spite of their circumstance about their obligation to God and God's obligation to them. I don't know about you, but sometimes it is very difficult uh, to reconcile uh, our obligation to God and God's obligation to us. Uh, when things are going well, uh, we can certainly believe that it is uh, the obligation of God at work that things are going so well, um, that God is taking good care of us, that God is sustaining us, that God is strengthening us. But how many of you know when things aren't going well, that's when the real questions begin to bubble up in our minds. I was um, uh, uh, reading through some of my uh, favorite theologians this week, Jurgen Moltmann is one of them, and he was talking about omnipotence, the, the power of God, and, and the omniscience of God, the all-knowingness of God. And he was saying, you know, in the Western church, many of us uh, attribute power and knowledge uh, to the ability to have the intricacies of everything worked out. But, but Jürgen Boltman was saying, you know, as a survivor or, or as, as a person that comes from the era of uh, Nazi Germany, um, I have understood scripture to describe God's power not in relationship to the intricacies of life, but the ability of God to hold it all together. And, and I, I wonder if that could be helpful for some of us, because uh, sometimes when we think of God's power we're, and knowledge, we're often uh, consumed with, is God allowing all of this to happen to me? And did God know this was going to happen? And what kind of good God would allow these terrible things to happen to me. But I, I, I find that these passages in the exile of, of the prophet or uh, even Jürgen Moltmann's take or even the take of some of our ancestors that uh, when, when, when they say God's got the whole world in God's hands, that maybe that is the best and fullest expression of God's power that even with all of the the, the details that seem to be fraying in our lives and in the world, God's power holds it all together. Whew, it, 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 it does give me a, a, a different perspective about what does it mean to be all powerful because you can know a whole lot of things and not be able to hold it all together. Lord, have mercy. I, I, wish, I wish I had somebody who were honest about all the knowledge you've attained all the skills you've acquired, the ability to, 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 to uh, uh, break things down to the granularity of its existence. That is some power, but isn't it a greater power to be able to hold it all together without it falling in on itself? That is perhaps the great power of God, and it is this power that fuels the hope that lies within. So Isaiah chapter 40 is preaching and speaking to a people who is very, very familiar with bondage, with exile, with what it appears to be a failed promise. And this is the response of the prophet channeling the uh, inspired words of God to a people who feel like the promise of God the hope that comes from God has failed. Isaiah chapter 40, verse number one, the scripture says it like this, comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God, and speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Verse number three, a voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. 
Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Verse number five, then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people, somebody say all people, all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Come on, even in your home, in the chat, uh, even with your own voice and mouth, let us say thanks be to God. We thank you, God, for your word. Amen. I'm going to keep preaching on this uh, topic and, 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 and subject of hope by just declaring hope keeps making a way. Hope keeps making a way. Come on, let's pray. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you that we will hide your word in our hearts so we will not sin against you and allow the anointing of God that makes preaching and teaching easy. May it rest upon me and even the hearers of your word. And we'll say thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Hey, let the people of God say amen. Hope keeps making a way. I think the first Sunday I preached on this topic, I, I, I talked a little bit about uh, hope won't let me go. Hope has a hold on you or uh, I've got my eyes on you, I think was my first uh, uh, time of, of preaching on hope. And I was attempting to excavate the word hope, to uh, rightly place hope beyond that of a political slogan that has often been used by, uh, you know, most recent political figures, Barack Obama, other kinds of, of, of political figures, uh, 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 folks that have, have taken and extracted these rich, deep theological terms and, and have attempted to uh, seduce us into placing our confidence in that which has already proven to be insufficient. That hope is more than a slogan. It's more than a, a, a concept that uh, gives you false kind of senses of possibility. Hope is, as we know it, through our theological uh, faith and Christian traditions, a virtue that comes from God, a, a download, if you will, of, of divine spiritual power. Uh, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 uh, talks about three things that will remain, faith, charity, and hope, and, and how these three virtues as the theologians of uh, Christian uh, practice and reflection uh, deem as theological uh, virtues and characteristics that have at their motive the formation and power fueled by God to allow us to live for God and to love that which God has created. It is a powerful and important distinction to understand hope, not as something that uh, is, is contingent on the outcome, but that which is perpetually at work in the believer. That hope, is that which allows you and I, along with faith and love, to pursue God and those things that please God, even when all the evidence around us would compel us to throw in the towel or to respond out of our own sense of anxiety, worry, power, and safety. Hope is that which is an active agent in the life of the believer, it is that which makes a way for God to work. Hope is, is a, 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 a clearing tool, if you will, uh, something that clears the way and, and, and removes the debris. It, it is a placeholder. Lord, I love talking about hope right along through here. It's a placeholder for uh, the inevitability of God's arrival. You all just put that in the chat. Hope is a placeholder in my life. You ever, you ever, you know, I needed to just hold some space 
uh, for, for other people. Hold some space for yourself. Hold some space for that which is to come. I'm carving out space in my life for that which has not yet arrived. Well, hope is the concrete space creator, the holder of that inevitable arrival of God. It is the bookmarker, if you will, that helps you to go back to the place uh, where you think you have forgotten you came from. Hope is active in the life of every Christ follower, and it is most powerful when we are thrust into the wilderness and deserts of our lives. And this is what the power of this passage and, dare I say, the season of Advent is all about. Because Advent at its core is about preparation. It is about you and I preparing ourselves for the arrival of the Savior. It is the perpetual placeholder where no matter what happens in the year, in time, in your calendar, you always know that come uh, December, there is a season that I have the opportunity to prepare myself for the arrival of the Savior, not just of the world, but for me, the Savior of my life, the Savior of my family, the Savior of my relationships, the Savior of my body, the Savior of my community, the Savior of all that concerns me. And it is important for you and I to be able to have these markers, if you will, because life sometimes can become so overwhelming that you and I will often forget that, as the Catholic theologians powerfully say, the incarnation does not stop, does not uh, stop happening, that the incarnation is a perpetual uh, 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 a uh, uh, practice and 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 arrival of the divine that the incarnation, God being made flesh, Jesus uh, taking on the 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 creation of His own hand. That the incarnation is really the consistent reality that God seeks to make God's self present in our lives. And so, if we know that God is coming. <laughs> How many of you know sometimes we got to get ready? You ought to tell your neighbor, get ready, get ready, get ready for the arrival of God, because it is indeed the case that sometimes we can miss God, not because God did not show up. It's just because we were not ready. Preparation then becomes so important if you are getting ready for the arrival of such a great guest, of such a great companion, of such a great presence, that there are moments in my life that I need to get myself ready. I gotta get myself together. And preparation allows me to not be caught off guard when the arrival of God comes. But I must declare and I must uh, decree that sometimes uh, the arrival of God, uh, if it's perpetually happening, uh, then I am often given the season of the life that I am in, whether I'm in the wilderness, whether I'm in the desert, whether I'm in the valley, I can often not be ready. Anybody ever has someone coming to pick them up and it's like, just give me five more minutes? And that five minutes turn to 10 minutes, and that 10 minutes turn to 30 minutes? Or let me flip the script. Anybody ever been going to pick somebody up? Praise God. And you go to pick them up and you know you got somewhere to go. You got a, a schedule to keep. And because they're not ready, uh, you don't want to leave them. I remember I was, you know, trying to catch a flight and, and you know, I, I, I'm the kind of person when I travel, you know, I like to just, I like to get on a flight uh, just right on time. I like to just walk to the security, walk to the gate and just keep on walking to my seat. I try to plan my, 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 my arrival at the airport just so I can keep walking right onto a plane. And, 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 and sometimes if people travel with me because they don't have TSA pre and all these different things, it is not always a, a good experience for them because they have to rush, but because I'm prepared, <laughs> mm -hmm, then you know uh, I, my stress level is different. Uh, sometimes you and I may not be prepared, and because we're not prepared, 
Sometimes the people we're traveling with, or sometimes, dare I say, the arrival itself can add stress and concern and worry. It is even in those moments that I appreciate how the presence of hope becomes the, 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 the catalyst to prepare us while we go through. Hope is not just that which holds space, but hope is that which is built as we go through. Why? Because hope works on its own. Hope is self-sufficient. It is self-directed. Hope does not need your instruction in order for it to cultivate itself. Hope is like artificial intelligence, which, which, which can have its own kind of consciousness and sensibility. And, and, and if you uh, watch science fiction movies like I do, sometimes artificial intelligence, it kind of just goes off and does things that the creator had not even imagined. Well, I want you to know that's what hope is like in your life. Hope is like that artificial intelligence that has gone way beyond your ability to ascertain it or to domesticate it. Hope does not wait for your permission to work. But it is always at work as an extension of the divine activity of God in our lives. And I want you to know, child of God, that the season of Advent is the season we get reminded that the inevitability of God's perpetual arrival, the incarnatability of God's arrival, of God's promises, of the hope that lives within, it never stops happening. And when you and I can fully embrace the idea that when Jesus arrives, as the prophet has declared, Jesus is not arriving with condemnation. Jesus is not arriving with a critique on your suffering or your struggle. But as the prophet says in Isaiah 40 verse 1, Jesus is arriving with a call and clarion directive for comfort and tenderness. Particularly as you and I go through the wilderness of COVID, the desert of, 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 of isolation, the, the struggle of depression and anxiety, even in the midst of all of these realities, hope is still arriving and inviting you and I. Woo, at the, the, in this passage, uh, verse number four, uh, uh, verse number three, uh, uh, inviting you and I to make straight a highway for God. God is inviting you and I to allow hope to keep making a highway for God, a path for God. Through my disappointments, hope is inviting me to make a straight path for God to show up. And I want you to know, child of God, that that is what it means for hope keeps making a way. Hope is that which keeps inviting you and I to make a pathway for God, to show up, not just with uh, the, the, the reality of salvation, but the, the anticipation of what salvation means when salvation comes. You ought to just put that in the chat and just say, God is inviting me to make a highway for God. Now, you know, I, I, I was intrigued and I was struck by the language in this passage, verse number three, where it talked about uh, the, the voice crying out, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for God. And I began to think about this and I was saying, you know, what are the steps used to make a highway, a roadway, a pathway for travelers, for guests for visitors to uh, use with confidence and with perpetual uh, function, if you will. And there are seven steps that I found online about the kinds of steps that uh, the master uh, highway construction companies and firms use in order to make highways. And, 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 and I'm going to give you about six of them because I, I find them to be apropos as we go through these three ways that I 
feel God is, is making a way for us through the power of hope. The first thing that you must do according to this, this uh, construction company is you must have a, a step of demolition and removal. That in order for you to make a highway, you must remove the existing surface of asphalt and concrete, and you must use uh, heavy machinery, including bobcats and forklifts, front loaders and dump trucks, that in order to make the highway, uh, you have to first demolish some things and remove some things. Come on, just, just, just put, a, put a pin on that, right? The second thing that the, the, the firm says is, you then must engage in grading and sloping. This is a process where the, the construction workers, they prepare the surface for appropriate water drainage. Why? Because if you don't have spaces for the water that will accumulate on the surface of the asphalt to drain out, it will create potholes and cracks that will damage the highway and make it not useful. Grading and sloping. The third thing, it says, you must prepare the sub base which means that uh, there is a support system, a support framework underneath the asphalt that you and I don't ever get a chance to see. That the sub base is the most important part of the highway. It is beyond your view, but you depend on it to hold the highway together particularly when there is winter damage and freezing and thawing, that the, the, the sub base, Lord have mercy, keeps the highway from just falling into the, 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 the earth, the, the moving, the, 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 the vicissitudes of the ground and the earth beneath the highway, the sub base. Then it says that you got to do a proof roll. And the proof roll, it, it allows you uh, to ensure that the surface is strong and ready to support the new asphalt that you're going to put on top. Listen to how they do the proof roll. They say that in order to do the, the proof roll, you have to get a dump truck loaded with 72,000 pounds of material. And you got to roll the truck over the material. And if the ground does not buckle... If it does not move more than an inch under the weight of the truck, then you got a proof roll ground. Lord, the third, fifth, fourth, or fifth thing, it says that you got to have a binder and a surface course, which means that you got to then create a layer on top of the asphalt that is mixed with oil that makes very strong and durable the, the, the asphalt that you have placed down on the sub base. And then you got to put a new surface of asphalt on top of it. And that is mixed with oil and sand and the aggregate, the, the chemicals that bind it all together. Then you got butt joints and transitions that make sure that the new asphalt connects to that which was there before. I, I was so intrigued by the way in which uh, human beings take such care to build roads and highways so they can perpetually be used by you and I to go to and fro without concern of its ability to hold us. Can you imagine what kind of, of parallels are at work in you and I when hope seeks to make a pathway, a straight way for God to show up in our lives. That hope has to serve at times as the placeholder where demolition and removal happens. Hope has to serve sometime as the space where potholes and cracks are avoided because of the ability to allow certain things to, to drain out of our lives. Hope serves as the foundation, the, the, the unseen substance of of what holds the, the highway together. Even though we see the cracks on the surface, hope is that which holds the highway together underneath. That all of these ways, hope continues to make a way. And when we come to this passage, we see that the prophet is literally declaring to the people while they are in exile that you and I are invited to receive the hope of God, 
through the words of comfort and tenderness and the, the work of God's activity in our lives and even the revelation of God that is to come. Three ways then that I think that you and I can imagine hope making a way through the tools and the ways of God in our lives. The first thing that I feel hope declares, verse number one, hope speaks through us by declaring comfort. Hope speaks through us by declaring through tender words of affirmation that we are not forsaken. I want you to I want you to say that hope speaks through us. The the tool that is used to make ways for God's arrival in our lives is through the use of God's voice, of the prophet's voice, of the voice of the hopeful around us. That hope speaks through us. When the scripture and the prophet is declaring comfort and tenderness as the texture of hope's voice, it is so important for you and I in this season and in this moment to look for the ways in which hope speaks through us and to us with comfort and tenderness. That as we go through the seasons of challenge and difficulty, hope speaks to the afflicted. Hope makes a way in our lives, a path, a straightway path for God's arrival through comforting words and tender interactions. Hope allows you and I to give to others that which has been given to us. Uh, the, 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 the words of, of the New Testament writer in, I believe, 1 Corinthians simply says it like this, that with the same consolation, Christ consoles you in your suffering and in your grief. You ought to use that same consolation to comfort others in their times of grief. That in many respects, the grief that you and I feel because of loss and challenge and struggle is the way that hope is literally making a way for God's arrival. That grief can be used or redeemed, dare I say, by hope as an opportunity for God to show up. That loss, that struggle, that difficulty, hope speaks to us. Hope holds space for us so the arrival of God can be perpetual. That God finds us in our difficulty because of the presence of hope. Hope is like that 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 bat signal if you like to watch some of these uh, comic books praise God hope is like that that bat signal that shoots into the air that sends a signal that I need some help hope is that which perpetually makes sure that in your life God knows that there's a place for me to come there's a place for me to arrive dare I say there's a place for me to dwell the second way that hope keeps making a way is that hope makes the way in us. Come on, just, just, just say that. Hope makes the way in us. In verse number four, hope uh, is, 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 as the scripture says, making every valley lifted up, every mountain be made low. The uneven ground becomes level and the rough places are made plain. Hope makes the way in us that how many of you know sometimes there is work to be done in us that we are the material by which God seeks to make hope real and concrete. That sometimes we can spend all of our time, much of our time, focusing on the external realities when God is seeking in real time to help us do the work inside of us, the work underneath the surface that serves as the substratum for everything that happens 
to the naked eye. Think about the ways in your life that hope is making the way in you. Hope is paving a highway for God in you. Hope is saying that in your life where there is a valley, I will help to lift it up. In your life where there is a mountain, I will help make it low. In your life where there is unevenness, I will be the one to bring some leveling out of that circumstance. In your circumstance and experience where there are rough places, hope is that which helps make things a plain level surface. Hope makes the way in us, meaning hope carves out. Hope is the bulldozer through all of your despair and your, your struggle. Hope does not sit back waiting for you to tap into it. <laughs> but hope is the active agent in your life that when grief and death and despair and depression make their arrival, hope cuts a pathway into all of these circumstances so God can come marching into your circumstance to give you that which you need to keep pushing forward. Hope does not erase death. Hope shows up in the middle of death. Hope does not abandon you in your trial. Hope carves a path for you to endure your trial. Hope does not run away when the devil shows up. Hope says, hey, this is a, I'm a placeholder because God is on the way. You ought to just put that in the chat and say, hope is working on me. Yes, it is. Hope is working on me right now. Hope is, is carving out some paths and some spaces. Hope is, is figuring out how to help me get through to this next season and this next step. Hope is actively working in me to make a straight highway for God to show up. And I'm here to tell you that I need hope to keep working on me. I need hope to keep carving a path. I need hope to keep doing uh, the, the heavy lifting in my life. I, I need hope to, to have its own kind of, of sensibility. I don't need hope to wait for me to access it. No, I need hope to, to have a mind of its own, to have a mission of its own, to have a purpose to be self-directed. I need that kind of hope to keep working in my life. And then the last thing that hope does, if, if the first thing it does is it speaks through us with comfort and tenderness. If it speaks to us with comfort and tenderness. If it cries out to us with comfort and tenderness. And then it makes the way, it helps you and I do the internal work that is needed to be prepared for hope to show up. The third thing that hope does, hope sees for us. Hope sees for us. Verse number five says, then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people. Lord, have mercy. All people, not just the people I like, not just the people who agree with the way that I see the world. Lord, not just the people who are part of my church, who are part of my, my tradition, who are part of my political party, who are part of my racial cultural uh, uh, background, not the people who live on my block, not my family, but all people. Somebody say all people. All people. Hope sees for us the revealing of God's showing up in our lives. And I love how the writer says that when the glory of the Lord is revealed, all people shall see it together. Hope keeps reminding us that we are a people, a community. We are not individuals uh, that are, are going through life by ourselves. No, we are a people that are experiencing both the highs and the lows together, both, both the, the struggles and the triumphs together. That is why the, the response of so many in this season to things like COVID where you won't wear a mask or you won't honor the, the, the 
the, the guidelines around gathering are so pernicious uh, because too many people are, are claiming certain rights for the individual that are putting at risk the kind of collectivity of the revealing of God in the world. Uh, but I believe that you and I don't have to experience life in an individualistic manner. Uh, but I think that God is reminding you and I that we can see the revealing of God together. Your family can see it together. I know that we may mourn together, but your prayer ought to be God in the midst of my mourning. Uh, help me God to be able to see your revealing with those I mourn with uh, in the midst of my struggling and my questions uh, God help me to see the glory that is to be revealed uh, with all those I struggle and question life with uh, hope becomes the eyes that help you and I see the glory that is to be revealed uh, and hope points to that which is to come. Uh, hope helps you and I to have the kind of eyes of faith uh, that can see those things that are not uh, as though they are. Uh, hope is that which fuels the possibility uh, that I know revelation is on the way. And I know that because I have the hope that lies within, uh, the hope that works within, uh, the hope that cries out with tenderness and comfort. Uh, I know that this hope is at work in such a way uh, that it is designed to help me to see uh, what I can't see. Uh, it helps me to have a vision uh, that while I am making the path straight, uh, while I'm making the present straight, uh, while I'm carving through the difficulties of my life, uh, hope helps me to see uh, the vision Vision of possibility yeah, that trouble won't last always. Hope uh, is that which helps me to be reminded uh, that God is going to get some glory out of this. Uh, I'm reminded of the man who was born blind, uh, who had to have a run in with Jesus. Uh, many of the disciples of Jesus uh, were asking Jesus who sinned that this man would be born blind. Uh, was it his mother? Uh, was it his father? Father. Uh, was it something he did in his own life? Uh, but Jesus had the eyes of hope uh, and he cooked in with the hope that lies within the blind man. Uh, and Jesus said, nobody sinned. Uh, that, that, that resulted in this man's blindness. Uh, but God allowed it to be so. Uh, so we can experience some glory. Uh, I stopped by to tell you this morning uh, that in the season of Advent uh, you and I need to be ready uh, for the arrival of God uh, through the eyes of hope uh, not because we've done anything wrong uh, not because we are forsaken uh, not because trouble is on our heels uh, but God is saying to us uh, through the eyes of hope uh, that I'm going to get some glory I'm gonna get some glory I'm gonna reveal to you what you did not know was possible I'm gonna play a role in your life that you did not think was even within reach God is saying you have me in a box but I'm getting ready to blow outside the box you created you thought I could only meet you in the building but God says I'm going to teach you how to be community outside the four walls you thought the best part of church was Sunday but God said my hope lives with you Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday that the hope that lies within is not predicated on the preacher not predicated on the singers uh, but the hope is an active agent uh, that is carving through the wilderness uh, showing up in the desert uh, hanging out in your mind uh, fueling you in your 
spirit, the hope of God. It is the glory of the Lord being revealed. So in this Advent season, tap into the hope. In this Advent season, listen for the comforting words. In this Advent season, let God tenderly and preciously hold you together. In this Advent season, let hope, let hope exalt every valley. Let hope make low every mountain. Let hope even out the rough places in your life. And whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you do, child of God, let hope see for you that which you can't see for yourself. Let hope reveal, not just to you singular, but to we plural, the glory of the Lord that shall be revealed. I dare you, keep on hoping. I dare you, keep making hope make a way for you. Like they said in the Mandalorian, this is the way. This is the way. This is the way we hope. This is the way we love. This is the way we worship. This is the way we serve. This is the way we celebrate the hope of God. Spread abroad in our hearts by Christ Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Hope keeps making a way. Hope keeps finding the parts in our lives that require hope's activity. Hope, Lord, I pray for you. I certainly pray it for me. That hope will have self-directed freedom in my life in our lives, that hope will help us to maintain faith and love, the virtues given to us through the power of God's spirit. Why? Because the incarnation never stops happening. Jesus never stops showing up. So come on, let's take a few moments right now. And let's ask God, Lord, I need you in this moment. I need you, God, to make a way. Make a way. Make a way in my triumphs. Make a way in my pain. Hope make a way through the desert and through the wilderness through the power of your spirit hope keep making a way so your arrival can be something we all behold your salvation your deliverance your healing God when it arrives may it be something we all behold I pray for the person, Lord, under the sound of my voice today. The person who's needing a concrete manifestation of your hope. I pray, God, that this hope at work in us will be made known to us. I pray that this hope will bring comfort I pray this hope will handle our challenges and our struggles, and dare I say, us and our families with tenderness. I pray this hope will perform work in us while we are enduring another season of COVID, while we're enduring these holy and sacred days while we're enduring the presence of death and sickness and 
political upheaval, I pray hope God will do work in us that fortifies us, God, for your arrival, even in the midst of these real and present circumstances. God, I'm calling for hope. May it be spread abroad in our hearts. God bless you, people of the way. It is my hope, it is my prayer that you allow hope to keep making a way for you. Allow hope to keep carving out a straight highway for God's arrival in your life. As we go through the season of Advent, may we be in positions to receive the hope of God while we shelter in place, while we engage in our own family quarantines and gatherings, honoring the request of our medical professionals. Let hope carve a path into your house and into your family so God can arrive and be made known to you and I. We certainly love you with the love of the Lord. This week we have prayer times. We have opportunities to plug in in small groups. So please stay connected. Please remain in relationship and fellowship with one another. Plug into the opportunities that will be emerging to bless others and deliver charity and mercy ministries to those who are in need during this season and let the arrival of God catalyze you to arrive for someone else. And let's keep hope making a way for us in Jesus' name. God bless the people of the way. Bless us as we leave this virtual sanctuary but are always in close connection with you and certainly with one another. Give us what we need, God, for this season. And we'll say thank you, Lord. Thank you for Advent. Thank you for the regular scheduled times of your arrival. May they be real and known to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, people of the way. We love you.